Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Daily Dose of Leak Code, where we do daily Leak Code live streams. If you're looking into getting your first question solved on Leak Code, you have no idea where to begin, you're sort of lost, as many of us are, head over to my YouTube channel, Leak Code Live daily lead code streams and make sure you subscribe because I do these every single day at around 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern and then on the weekends pretty much whenever I wake up. I have an entire playlist dedicated to streams where you can start from the beginning. You can watch every single one just about an hour a day and by the time you get to where we are today we would have done 152 questions. I've only been doing this for less than a month so just imagine that in less than a month you can come out to be at 152 questions. I think that's pretty amazing. And that's pretty exciting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's kick off this hour with, let's see, what's it going to be? Keyboard row. That's going to be our first question today. All right, starting off with a not so good quality question, but it's okay. We're going to see how far we can get. And if it's terrible, we can always save it for a weekly roundup. Else we'll just chill on here. All right, let's see what we got. So given an array of strings, words, Return the words that can be typed using letters of the alphabet on only one row of American keyboard, like the image below. So the first row consists of the characters, these characters, the second row, and the third row. Okay. So we have hello, Alaska, and dad. And they want to see, given an array of strings words, return the words that can be typed using letters of the alphabet on only one row of American keyboard, like the image below. So we always want to stick to one, right? We have three different rows, and as we're typing, as soon as we pick one row, all the other characters also have to be inside that row. So let's think about this. I mean, we could we could check all three every single time, but I'm not sure I love that. We can do something where I wonder if Something, I'm, I'm thinking something like this, like pick a row anytime we diverge, break. Else if we make it to the end, else if we make it to the end, add to result. Now it's a matter of trying to see which one of these. So in any one of these, the first row consists of this, the second row, the third row, it would be nice if, should I just map all these to a row? Maybe I should map all of these to a row. That would be nice to do and just give them their place. I can loop through this and say this belongs to row zero, this belongs to row one, this belongs, or one, two, zero, one, two, three. And then if I ever see, I, I, I sort of try and find where it exists first, and then all the rest of them have to be part of the same row. Is that what I want to do? And this consists of English letters, both lowercase and uppercase letters. Oh, so it can also be, oh, interesting. It doesn't even need to be, okay. But I guess we can, I guess I can also make sure that my words are case insensitive. That's one thing that we could do. But there might be an easier way of doing this. Alaska and dad and peace. Hmm. Oh, uh, can I make? Let's think about this. All the words are accounted for in a single row but I also want it to be case insensitive. Maybe I might just do a two lowercase on each one of these to make it case insensitive. That could be maybe the a, a all right way of doing it. I don't know if it's the best, but I'm okay with it. So let's do this. Okay, so let's create our alphabet here. I'm gonna make this a new array of size 26 and fill it up with zero. Now for this one, Let's see, the first row consists of the first characters. What I want to do, let's see, for, for con C of this, I want to do the code equals C dot car code at zero minus 97 
and then in my alphabet at the code I want to make this one this way we know it's on row one now I'm gonna make this a function because I want to do this three times so I'm gonna say const fill alphabet here will be given a word a word and a row and then I would like to pretty much just do this here right so let's do this for const C of word we're going to do alphabet of code equals row so we can do this three times now the first time we'll do it with this string this is row one second time I'll just copy this a couple more times this is just filling up my alphabet and putting the row where each of them belong that way we just know two and three okay so now what I want to do is for const word let's actually let's get our result const result equals this for const word of words I can say const to lower word equals word to lower case right I just want to get it case insensitive so I don't have to worry about it and the first time so let's do this for const word of words I'm gonna lowercase that word and I'm gonna say let let row equals so to lower word let's see this is a lot of stuff we have to do so we have to get the index const first car code equals to lower word dot car code at zero minus 97 I just want to get I want to get the index of the first so like the first word here is H so I want to get the character code of H so I can see what row it belongs in and I can say here const row equals alphabet alphabet of first car code so we'll do this and now I can actually start for that word I can do for let I equals one because we've already considered the first character I less than two lower word dot length I plus plus so we have row we're gonna have to do the same thing here again let's just say const code const code equals let's see to lower word of I okay now we can say if alphabet of code is not equal to row then we break so when we break out of here at the end here we want to add so I will only want to let's see I can go through the whole thing and at the end I add it but if I break from here I know there's like a nicer way of doing this oh wow we have like a lot of viewers today that's awesome six viewers yo quick question not to distract you being based in South Florida somebody told me to learn angular since most jobs are enterprise I think that's more beneficial but I want to learn react laugh out loud yeah I think that um I guess I mean if you're targeting Florida really like the biggest companies in Florida I would say are probably like UKG and Citrix and probably maybe I funny story like I actually used to work at Disney World Disney World is an entertainment company. They're not like a tech company, but they still they, they still hire software engineers. So if you're targeting enterprise, I think Angular is probably good to learn. But I think in general, if you just want to advance yourself in your career, especially if you identify as like a front end engineer, I probably recommend just learning as much as you can. So definitely learn React and Angular at the very least. And I think as you begin to grow more in your career, you probably I, I would focus more on concepts and less on syntax. What I mean by that is instead of worrying about learning how to learning like Angular or React, you should just learn how to do things in front end. For example, oh, how can I make an HTTP request, get some content and render that to the screen? How can I manage state in my application? How can I route to different pages in my application? Like each framework provides tools for doing that. But once you start to think more abstractly like that, then the syntax is just like a means to an end, right? So hopefully that sort of answered your question. I hope it did. And yeah, just let me know if you have any other questions. I'd be more than happy to more than happy to answer them. All right, so to lower word dot length, I guess we can say here let 
same row equals true. Here I'll just say same row equals false and break. And only if same row, then I can say uh, result dot push. And we want to push the word, right? We don't want to push the two lower road, uh, two lower word. Result dot push word and then return dot result. Liban Jama, I also appreciate that answer. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, Liban. Yeah, like I think in general, the the more experience you have, just learn like learn abstractions, learn concepts, right? Like every language you can, for example, iterate over a collection. Every language you can declare variables and constants. Every language has some support for object oriented programming, right? Just once you understand that, then yeah, the syntax just becomes like a means to an end. All right, let's see what this gives us here. Uh, okay, I think I added I added something in one of these that it didn't like. Uh, maybe in here? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Alaska and Dad. Okay. Well, one hundred two. Normally, normally for these guys, I don't get more than a hundred milliseconds on a test case. Okay, seventy two. Alaska. Okay, let's submit this. Thirty eight point sixty eight. Yeah, like, let me just explain quickly what I did here. So I, they give us they give us the string that represents each row. So what I did was I created a static statically sized alphabet, where for each one of the rows, right, I assign a number. So like in that position, like where a Q would belong inside of this array, there's a number one to signify it's in, in the first row. And similarly with the other ones. And then what I do, since they're saying that it can be uppercase and lowercase, all I did was I made the word lowercase here. That way it's case insensitive. I don't have to worry about different cases. What I do is for the first word that we get, like let's say we get hello, right? I get the code of H and I find out where that row is. So like let's say H is row two, right? So now I have row two and now I can start at the second character because I have to go from E to O and each all of these should also be row two. And if they're not, if at any moment that is not true, then I just break. And then only if it's the same row do I push the word. So that's what I came up with initially. It seems like there's probably a better way of doing it. And I also feel the same way. It just, I, don't, I don't really love what I'm doing here. Let's see if we can spend maybe a couple more minutes to figure out if there's perhaps a better way of doing it. Let's see. Curious. So, like, it'd be nice if I didn't have to, I mean, this right here, I guess, is all, like, okay, but, yeah, it would be nice if I can just do it, like, in one go instead of having to iterate three times, although this is going to be constant, right, because these are all, these will always be the same size, so pretty much this is constant time because it's always an array of 26, um, well, I guess this is not constant time, it's, N, it's like x plus y plus z. These are all different, but I also think that it doesn't matter the input size. These will always be the same size rows, so maybe perhaps that is constant. Here, let's see. We could say mm, same row, then we're iterating over the rest. We need to check that all of them can fit in the same. I feel like I'm gonna need to iterate, like. I feel like worst case, we'll definitely need to go through every single. We'll need to go through every single word and we'll need to look at every single character because if we don't like, how would we know that we can not write it in the first place? English letters. I feel be, this will be like M by N. Okay, 91.38, that's, that's wild. I feel like it would be M by N where M is the size of the array and N is the size of each of the words inside of it. Let's see what discussions say, because since it's like not too great of a quality question, I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay, I have used set to check the word. I firstly make every line of a set a letter, then I check every word. This word set is a subset of any line set, okay? For words and words, W of set or lower. If W is less than, okay, this, 
That, that doesn't make sense. Okay. Map of C. Put car row index pair into the map. Okay. Clear. Don't need a Boolean flag. If index is not if index not equal to negative one, this is okay, this is pretty much exactly what we did. My two cents. Here is my solution. My simple and readable solution. Nice. These are these are the ones I like a little more. When I see solutions like this, I see them as a little more realistic. Um, the the set thing is pretty cool, but I don't even thought I don't think I could do that in JavaScript. So sometimes we're bounded by the language, right? Sometimes we're bound by the syntax. Anyway, let's move on to the next one because this one, again, look at this ratio here. It's it's not a good quality question. So let's focus on one that is. <clears throat> All right, so minimum value to get positive step-by-step -step sum. Given an array of integers nums, you start with an initial positive value of start value. In each iteration, you calculate the step-by-step -step sum of start value plus elements in nums. Return the minimum positive value of start value such that the step-by-step -step sum is never less than one. Okay, what does this mean? So sometimes these, these descriptions are just hard to understand. Okay, so if you choose start value of four, in the third iteration, your step-by-step -step sum is less than one. Start value four, four plus three is one, one plus two is three, three minus three is zero. 0 plus 4 is 4. Okay. Given an array of integers, you start with an initial positive value of start value. In each iteration, you calculate the step-by-step -step sum of start value plus elements in nums. 0 plus the 4. If you choose start value of 4, minimum start value should be positive. One, two, this is really weird. So what do I want? I always want it to be like, okay, three minus three. How do we, there's got a, there's probably like a pattern here. Start value equals five, five minus three is two, two plus two is four, four minus three is one. Turn the minimum positive value of start value. Oh, such that the step-by-step -step sum is never less than one. Um, doesn't that mean that, oh wait, this could be anything? Shouldn't the minimum, shouldn't the minimum just be one plus, okay, no, it shouldn't. That, that completely just like, I almost thought it should be like one plus, because, let's think about this. Your channel grows so fast. Thanks, Sam. Honestly, I, I'm very, very happy of the growth that I've had so far. Yeah, thanks so much. And I'm trying, I'm trying to like get the word out. I'm trying to offer people like a different perspective here with everything that we're doing. And yeah, I'm glad that we have some some people joining. I recognize a lot of people here, you know, Sam, Marvin. Le I think Lebon is definitely new. If you haven't already subscribed to Lebon, go ahead and subscribe. And the reason I'm asking is not just so much for subscriptions, but I have an alert box on the stream that I haven't had a chance to actually have it like show up on the stream. And I want someone to subscribe so you can see the little alert. Cause I think that's like a fun thing, right? It like keeps engagement on the channel. So I think that's cool. All right, so this one's weird, but what I think, like if I pick, if I pick four, let's see. Uh, I guess it could be because it could also be this one, right? So what if I have like the biggest positive minimum start value should be positive output is one. One plus one is one. One plus two is three. Okay. Five is six. That's three. This is two. The minimum step sum. Step by step sum is never less than one. I don't know, I, like, is this a math thing? What happens if we sort it? Like, will sorting help me out here? If I do negative three, negative three, two, two, four, one and two, that's one, one, two, three. Hmm. 
like initially I thought, well, it should be greater than the biggest one because if it's small, well, if it's smaller, yeah, because two minus four will be negative two and that's less than one. But then we also have the negatives that make it a little bit tough, right? So if it was three, if it was three, let me see, if we have here, it can't be three, okay, because that would be zero. Three minus negative three is zero, three minus negative two is negative one, okay. Negative two, that's zero, one. If it's all positives, I'll put it as one. So one plus one is two. Is this like a math question? I really want to see related topics, but oh wait a second, we also have this. This could be a clue. We only have a hundred numbers to consider here. Oh wait a second. What if I created? Uh, let me see something. What if we did? I'm not sure if this will actually help. But I'm curious, like if we drew, I don't know what that was. If I drew like a number line here, negative three to four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, say four. Let's make this orange. Negative three, two, and four. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, two, four. And then what's the next one? One, negative two, and three. Oh, that it keeps the drawing. Oh wait. One, negative two, and three. All right, that's what it was. One, negative two, and negative three. If we do here, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and one. I'm gonna put my, my, my table down for a second, so I'm just gonna go on mute for a quick second. So I'm trying to see if like something on this number line can give us a clue. So this first one here, they said it's five. One, two, three, four, and five is like way out here. The minimum step value is never less than, never less than one. Yeah, this one's pretty strange. If you start value four in the third iteration, your step-by-step -step sum is less than one. Four minus three. Four minus three is one. One plus two is three. Three minus three is zero. Okay. And we can in but like it wants us to choose any of start value. Well, start value in each iteration you calculate the step-by-step -step sum. Oh, I guess yeah, it can be any number, I guess. We start at negative three, negative two. Here, this is negative three, two, and four. Negative three, two, and four. Negative three, two, and four, and the answer is five. I think I'm gonna. Should we should we take a related topics? Let's let's look at the related topics. Prefix sum. Oh man. How will that how will that help here? If we if I take the prefix sum of this, so it'd be what? Like negative three, here would be negative three plus negative three. 
zero, negative three plus two, four, six. Zero, negative three, plus negative three. No, wait, this should be. Wait, with prefix sum, I always forget. Do you count the first one? Like, do you count? The first one is just negative three, right? Negative three plus negative three. That's negative six. Two plus negative six, negative four, two plus negative four, so negative two, four plus negative two is two, negative three. Yeah, I'm not in love with this question. Minimum value to get positive step by step sum. I'm not even plus elements synonyms. Yeah, let's let's skip this question. I'm not I don't even know if that is really like a valuable question to do. This one seems probably better. Although this one has like a whole document and everything. That's funny. Let's do this one. Find common characters. Oh. What's up with Lee code? The page isn't responding. That's not good. Is my computer gonna blow up right now? Oh wow. Okay. Let's come back here, find common characters. Can we get this to work? Chrome at its best, yeah, seriously. I wonder what's wrong here. Is Lee code down? That'd be funny if Lee code's down. Let me see. Sort array by increasing frequency. Oh wow. This might be down. Okay. Do I Actually, I was using Edge, not even, but I guess they're both Chromium-based browsers, so. Are they out of memory? Oh, wait a second, man. Uh-oh. I wonder if I'm still even live right now. I don't see anything on my screen. I think I think my computer's gonna blow up for the first time. Do you guys do you guys still hear me? Yeah, obviously there's something wrong here. I think, oh man, you know what? I think, yeah, I think Streamlabs OBS. 